So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Credit. So as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com we have an older pattern for you. I believe this may have been a leaflet on a store shelf at one point and this is the Red Heart and this is a Ripple Afghan by Mary Jane Protus. So what we have here is that I've actually diagrammed this out on uh, just rough paper for myself to understand this even more and I actually learned a few things uh, about this one because it is an older design. The way that it's written can be a little bit confusing and not saying it's wrong but times have moved forward and the way that we read things are different. So one thing I would like to point out to you right in the very beginning is right within the first few sections. So let me just show you that first and then we're gonna dive right into this this, uh, this tutorial today. So right here on row number four is a great example. So it says chain three, skip the first two double crochet and then uh, puff stitch into the next. The one thing I would like to tell you is that when they said skip the first two double crochets, it's skipping where the chain three comes out of and the next um, stitch. So when I was uh, diagramming this out I was realizing that I was missing a stitch because I was thinking that it's the chain three is a stitch and then the next two are what I'm skipping. So just gotta keep an eye out for that and that's the way things that used to be written at one point. So if you'd like to change the pattern for this uh, let me just step back you out a little bit here and if you'd like to change the pattern to make this a different size it's in multiples of 19 plus 23. So you just crochet 19, 19, 19. When you're happy with the width then you will add another 23 chains and that will bring you back into balance for this whole thing. You should know because you are going up and down it will compress because um, it has to compensate for that. So you gotta make sure that it's going to work out for you. So I don't have the different counts for different size blankets but uh, what I do have is this one here and it's chaining 175 to begin or 19 plus 23. I'm going to be using a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today with Bernat Symphony yarn. This is actually recommending um, a pattern here a six and a half uh, millimeter or a size K hook and it's also then using a Red Heart Super Saver and the way that the color is broken down is also in here. So you will notice that in this pattern all the color breakdown is what you see here. So that's something that you can decide for yourself or just let it roll and you could use self striping yarn because that's been developed since this pattern has been out. Let's uh, begin our journey right now. Grab your hook and yarn and let's I am using Bernat Symphony yarn. I do get complaints when I do I use yarn that changes color but I'm going to suck it up today and just I do it anyway because it's what I love. So I'm going to just start with a, a slip knot here. This is classified as an easy level. I think it's in between easy and intermediate. It's one of those. So um, you can either chain 175 and meet me right back here or you can do your set of 19. So if I was doing the 19 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. So that would be one chevron. But remember that the width of this is not the width that it would be because it has to compensate for going up like this. So you can either chain and set to nineteen and then when you're happy with it just add another twenty-three and then meet me back here right now and I'll be starting row number one in a moment. Let's do row number one. So row number one you have to watch the beginning and also the very end. Those are unique in the way that this is done. So what I want you to do is just turn it upside down and get the back hump of the chain and it's just easier and I need you to double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. So we have one, two, three, four, and five and go to the back chain of the fifth one there and this is a double crochet. So this technically what you just did is technically um, a skipped stitch and a double crochet and the reason why I tell you that is that that's what we have to do on the other side. So let's go up the hill. So that's the way that I describe it if you've ever been with me before. So there's gonna be seven stitches or double crochets going up the hill. So let's count seven up. So just moving along the chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. 
So if you have seven going up you might wanna count that. So after you've done that first double crochet and don't count that one but count the rest of them. So there should be seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you're at the top of the peak. So here in the next chain you're going to double crochet. Chain two, and double crochet into the same chain. So now we're gonna go down the hill. So if we went up seven, we're gonna go down seven. So let's do that. So the next seven is double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're gonna do a two together stitch and it's very unique on this one. So we had to go back to the actual diagram for the special instructions. So the uh, two together is unique. So you're gonna wrap the hook and go into the next stitch. So this is the very base of the, of the valley. So you're gonna go into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and hold it. Now you have to skip two more chains, so one and two and go to the third over, wrap the hook going into that one, pull through, pull through two and now hold. You should have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three. So the two together stitch has these two chains that are skipping. So now we're gonna go up the hill. So the next seven are gonna go up. So we're gonna continue what you already know now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So do you remember to, what to do with the top of the peak? You've already done it before now. The next stitch is going to have a double crochet. Followed by a chain two and a double crochet. So if we went up seven, how many do we go down? It's seven. So let's count seven out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now we're at the base and we have to do that two together stitch once again. So do you remember how to do it? Wrap the hook, go into the next chain, Wrap the hook, pull through, and pull through two and hold. Skip two chains and go to the third and double crochet over there. So just pull through, pull through two and hold, and now pull through all through all three. So what I need you to do is go up and down your row, just like you know. So seven up, the top peak, seven down, two together, and I will meet you um, in just a moment as we're coming down on the final there to show you how to finish this edge. So please go up and down until the end and I'll see you at the end in just a few moments. So coming down the final, you're gonna have seven coming down and there should be three chains left over and there's no um, cut in on this video. It's actually real. So I wanna make sure that you don't think that I'm kinda cheating the system. So the very last one, so the next one is gonna be one double crochet by itself and then the last chain. So you're gonna skip this one and the last chain will be a double crochet. So they're standing on their own. So remember when we did that chain and we did the skipping over like this, this is what that equals. So it's basically missing the one chain in between. So we're gonna turn our work and begin row number two. So what you're about to experience is that row two is pretty much used again in the future. So you'll see in the instructions, I'm gonna just take you to a certain point of this tutorial but you'll notice that the color breakdown is suggested and it says to repeat rows number four through 15 
that's because there's a color situation happening but the actual stitch work repeats itself before then. So refer to the pattern if you need that extra help. So let's begin row number two. So in row number two you're going to just chain one and you'll single crochet in the first one. So right where it's sitting on top of and you're going to skip the next stitch and begin the next one right after that. So you'll single crochet in the next one after that. So the next eight actually. So skipping this one and starting that one it's gonna be eight in a row. So this is considered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that will take you all the way to the peak. In the peak here you need to place in three single crochets there. So we have one, two, and three. Now we're gonna go down the other side. So going down the other side if we went up eight you have to go down eight. So we're gonna count that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this should take you to the stitch just before the two together which it does. I want you to skip the two together and go immediately to the next one after that and go eight going back up the hill. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So eight should take you right to the peak and then in the peak you're doing three. So one, two, and three and I'll show you going down and up one more time. So going down eight and if you don't wanna count it and you can identify the stitch all the power to you. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight which should take you to the one just before and it does. So skip that one and go to the next one going up for eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Peak so you're gonna put three, so one, two, and three. So go all the way up and down and then meet me at the end and I'm gonna come down this, the final. So for those that are ready to do that, I'm gonna go down the eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that should take me to the last two that are left. You're gonna skip the next one and just single crochet in the top of the turning chain to finish row number two. So whenever it's row number two that's what it is. So you turn your work and let's begin row number three. So in row number three we're going to go back to double crochets. We already know how to do this but uh, it, we're no longer working with the chain. So row number three you're going to chain up three which is counting as a stitch and it says to, in row number three it says skip the first two single crochets. That means that this one that it's coming out of and the next one and you're gonna go to this one here. Okay so I know that sounds kind of confusing but remember what I said about the age of the pattern. So you're gonna come it over. So there's technically only one physical one that's skipped. So you're gonna go into that one. Okay and you're going to um, double crochet in the, in the eight. So this one that you just skipped over to is considered one of eight. So you're going to count up. So this is going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this eighth one should be the first one of the grouping of three that are here in the peak which it is. So the next one here is the peak and you already know what to do with that. You've done it before. So you're going to double crochet, chain two and double crochet into that same middle 
single crochet. So, so we're in the top of the peak. So in the here we did eight. We counted up eight. That's because these first two um, have you doing that. But now going up and down remember the number seven. So it's going to be seven down, seven up. So when we start we're going to start the next one and it'll be seven going down. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're going to do the two together and you can kind of see how it's going to align. So the next one and you're going to skip two and the next one. So the, these two are going to become together. So you're going to wrap the hook and going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold, skip in the next two, go to the third one away and grab that one and then pull together. So now you're going to go seven up and this should take you to where you need to be. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and that should take you to the next one being the middle which it is and so you'll do your stitch there. So double crochet, chain two and double crochet. So if we went up seven, we're going down seven. So let's do that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now the bottom becomes the two together. So we have it over four stitches. So it's the first one and the fourth. And then we go up seven. So we're getting closer to the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven which will take you to the next one being the peak which it is and so you'll double crochet, chain two and double crochet. So the very final edge, so you're gonna go up and down, up and down all the way and then the very final coming down. So the very final coming down is that you are going to go in and you are going to double crochet the next seven going down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now we have to deal with the edge. So there's three stitches left. So you're going to double crochet the next, skipping the next one and double crochet the next one after that which is the beginning. And that will pull it together. And that was the end of row number three. And so every time there's row number three, that's what you're going to do. So let's begin row number four. So row number four is the puff stitch. This is what makes it look pretty cool. So we're going to begin and you're going to chain three. So one, two, three. So that's your first double crochet. It says to skip the next two stitches which includes this one that you're sitting into plus the next one. So don't think it's skipping the next two empty ones because it's not and the puff stitch will be in this next one right here. So you're technically just skipping one and just going over here. And you're gonna do a puff stitch. So you're gonna wrap the hook and going in to the stitch and pull through. Be a little bit loose with this. Yarn over going in again and pull through and again and pull through and again. So you're doing it four times. I'll show this to you several times. Now to finish this stitch you have to pull through everything but the first one. So you just pull through and then pull through the final two to lock that. And now therefore you have some beautiful work going on now. And now chain one and you're going to skip only one stitch and puff stitch into the next. 
this whole row is puff stitching from this point. So we just gotta make sure that we deal with the tops and the bottoms properly. So skipping the next one we're going to puff. So just wrap and going in and wrap and going in. Just provide a little bit of slack it'll help you out and do it like that. And then pull through everything but the first one and then pull through the final two to lock and chain one and move up. So skipping the next one. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit. And pull through and chain one and do it again. So skipping this one, go into the next and this should take you to where I am sitting right now. So it's the second stitch before the peak. And chain one. So you will have seen now four puff stitches going up. So one, two, three, four. So I've now already chained one and in the top here you're going to puff stitch into the peak. So into the chain two. So we'll do that first. chain two because you're in the peak and in the same one again puff stitch again. If you're too tight with this it's harder with the puff stitch. So now the peak is done so chain one and then begin. So you're gonna skip the first one out going down the hill and you're gonna go to the second. So that's where you're gonna start your puff stitch going down. Chain one after you've got it locked and then skip in the next one and puff going down again. And chain, chain one to lock and then chain one and continue along. And then finally what we have going on here is that you chain one. You're going to skip one and this is the one just before the two together. Do you see that? And that's where you're gonna put another puff. chain one to lock it. Then don't chain anything after this puff and just skip the, the two together and just go to the one right after it and do another puff. And that kind of has those two puffs leaning into each other which is what you want. Okay so you can see let me just put it down on the table here. So you can see it's kind of gone up and then back down and you're at the middle point here at the at the valley. So now you're gonna work your way going up. So to start chain one first, skip in the next one and puff into the next. So I'll take you to the top of the peak. So keep skipping every other stitch. And this should take you to the second stitch before the peak which I'm currently sitting in now. So chain one and do the peak. So skipping the next one just go right to the peak and start your puff. Okay and then after it's locked in chain two to allow the more of a bend and then puff it back into the same peak. And then after that's done chain one and start moving down. So skip the first one, go to the second and puff. I'll take you to the bottom. Chain one, skip one, keep on puffing down. Chain one, 
chain one after you've locked it. It's also referred to as um, when you're pulling through the final of a puff stitch. When you pull through like this, this is also called um, chain two close, chain one to close. That's what that's called as well. So chain one after that's done and you're coming down. So I've noticed where those is. So I knew that the next one here and the one after it is going to lean into each other. So I'm going to puff and do both of them without any spaces in between. So don't chain one after you got it locked. Just skip the two together and just go to the one right after it and puff. and therefore chain one and start moving up. So I want you to keep going up and down your your valleys just like you've seen it here and I'm gonna meet you at the end of this coming down on the other side. I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm coming down the final side and so you will see that there's four puffs after the peak that are coming down and so you'll have two stitches left over. So this one plus the turning chain. Do not chain one after that final puff and just go into the turning chain with the double crochet and that'll conclude off row number four. So you can turn your work and you can see that the puff is jumping out the back side which is normal for this stitch. Let's begin row number five. In row number five we're returning back to double crochet so we're just gonna be playing within spaces and also puff stitches that we have. So starting right where we are we're going to chain three which will count as your first double crochet and it states in there that you are going to skip the first puff stitch which is the next and you're gonna start in the space between the two first puffs. And so starting there and you're going to double crochet. Now we have to get ourselves double crocheted back to the top of the peak. So every puff stitch and every stitch or every space is going to get a, a stitch from this point forward up and all the way to the peak. So just starting in the next puff stitch you can um, count. So if you wanna count so you can say one and then the space is two, the puff stitch is three, the space is four, the puff stitch is five, the space is six, and the last puff stitch before the peak is seven. So I counted that purposely so that you understand that we had seven going up before and we have seven coming up after that. So after this one is placed right in the space there's seven. So in the peak you already know what to do. It's gonna be a double crochet, chain two and a double crochet. So if you wanna count seven going down you can. So starting in the first puff if that helps you. So that we can count seven going down. So one and the space is two. The puff stitch is three the space is four, the puff stitch is five, the space is six, and the puff stitch is seven. So we have the two at the base here. See how they're leaning into each other and there's no space? So the two together is gonna go into this space here and into the space putting these two in between it. So yarning over, go into the space, pull through, pull through two and hold and then jump and put those in the middle. So just jump right here. So you've jumped over those two. And then you can start counting again. So starting in the next puff go up seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven which will take you to the last puff before the top and in the top it's a double crochet, chain two and a double crochet. So starting in the puff to go down for seven. So the puff for one, space for two, puff for three, space for four, puff for five, space for six, and the puff for seven. And this should take you to the base 
of where those two are leaning into each other which it is. So in this space and this space is where you're gonna play and put the two together. And then going up. So starting in the puff. So you can count if you wish. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that takes you to the puff before the peak. And then in the peak double crochet, chain two and double crochet. And then coming down starting in the puff. So this is the very final side. So you'll have your puff going down. So you have one uh, puff, one, uh, one equals the puff, two for the space, three for the puff, four for the space, five for the puff, six for the space, seven for the puff. So after you have your seven coming down and it's the edge, what we have here is at the very last space here before the last puff is going to be one double crochet and the turning chain here will be the last double crochet and that was row number five. And let's turn your work and take a look. So you can see that the puff stitch kind of comes and favors one side here. So this is the sequence of the events and let's go back to the pattern now and I'm gonna put the side out where the puff is sticking up as a reference. So now that I showed you row number five right up here, what we're going to do is that row number six is repeat two, row number seven is repeat three and you can see that the colors are changing. Row number eight is repeat four, rows number nine, ten and eleven is the repeat rows number five, six and seven. Row number twelve is with this color, repeat number four and rows 13, 14 and 15 is five, six, seven and again with the colors. So you have your color sequence then all developed by this point and then it's repeat four through 15 seven more times and then repeat rows number four through seven once. And do not fasten off at the end of the row because what we want to do is that we want to place a border edging. So what I'm gonna leave for you now is all the remaining of this blanket to be done because it, I've already shown you the steps to do that and then we're gonna move on to the finishing edge in just a moment. So the right side facing up is what we're going to be doing. So the right side facing up these puff stitches that you see should be popping out towards you. So you'll see in this it's kind of flat but this kind of is popping up. So this is considered the right side of the work. So let's pick up now and let's begin to do the final edging next. So the edging is kind of uh, very vague but we'll go through it anyway. So to turn the corners uh, just starting off where you are so the right side facing up and you can be on this side. You can be anywhere on this as long as it's on the right side. So chain up one and I recommend that putting three single crochets in a corner. So one, two and three. So we're just now going down the side edge. So just equally space out the stitch work. Do not go right around a post. Go into the actual chain work itself and just equally space out what you believe here. So if the work is starting to pull in like this it means that you're going too fast as far as jumping over and if it's starting to ruffle then it means that you are putting too many stitches too close together. So just roughly equal the amount. I've been crocheting a long time so I have this, I have already in my head kind of basically how to do that. So in the corners recommending that we put in three single crochets. So the designer has us saying um, to ourselves compensate for the ups and down valleys. So if you think that you need to skip a stitch in order to maintain the equalness then you have to do that. So starting in the very one, first one just one stitch into each and make a decision on the valleys if you're going to skip any stitches which I'd probably recommend if you're in the valley. So because I had you go into the back edge the bottom edge here is looking like a regular row. So that's not an accident my friends that's just the way it is. Um, my mom taught me to always crochet differently and so I always had one edge that kind of looked off. So by going into the back edge of or the back loop of a chain it works out. So what I would do if it were me and you weren't watching me 
I'm coming in and I'm gonna skip over top of the two together here and just go immediately into the next one. So if I put that, if I put another stitch in there, it'll round it off. So by skipping, it'll keep the angle. So I'm gonna come up So in the peak of here, do you remember what we did? When there was a chain two space, I would do the same thing. So with three single crochets. So one and go right into the space. Two and three and then immediately jump to the first one. If you wanna do less, it's up to you. If you don't like that space, then just do less. Maybe you put two in there. So just going up and down the valleys and just compensate for that. Go equally around the edge and this is how you will do the final edge and then you weave in your ends which I'll show you how to do in a few moments from now. So I'm coming all the way around on the edge coming into my last one and I'm going to slip stitch to the first one that I did right in the corner. Now to get rid of this yarn I'd recommend that you use a tapestry needle. Anytime that you have to change your yarns I'd recommend that. And you're just gonna pull through and you have a good side and a bad side. So the good side is the one where the puff is literally coming out towards you. So I want you to favor the back side of the project. Now the secret to the weaving in, so just turn it over to the back side, is just drag the yarn up underneath the work. Like that. And when you pull it, just be careful you don't change the shape of your project. Pull it taut and then go back to a slightly different path. Stay within the same color if you're using colors. And then back one more time. So you wanna stay within your project on the, on the inside. And so by going back and forth, I think I just did that off camera, but going back and forth a total of three times and just stay within side the work not within the edge and then you want to take care of any loose ends that you have doing those kind of things. I went ov over top of this when I did the border so you can just do that and it's the same technique we always use in every video. So it's a really neat idea and this here is a great afghan. It's a ripple afghan. It's, a, it's an old pattern but a great pattern. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.